Justin just called uh, and spotted smoke coming out the back right tyre again. So uh, we've still got braking issues. Uh, which is not good. Welcome back for another video, guys. I am here with my electric Volkswagen van that you have hopefully been following along the whole build series. It's actually been a few months since I left Jehu's workshop and I've got lots of updates for you guys. Some good ones, some bad ones, some issues I've been going through. Also, I'm uploading a video giving you guys all of the information on how much it cost me in total, the range I'm getting out of it, the top speed and any other questions you've got. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, throw some questions in the comments below so I've got those ready. But today's video is going to be more of just giving you guys an update. So the good news is, first of all, you can see I've had it polish so it's looking pretty nice it drives okay there's a few little issues still but it's it's fine it drives fine it's charging okay it's not quite the range i wanted to get out of it but overall it's great as a run around vehicle the issues i've had are mainly to do with running out of battery and the brakes. The brakes have been a nightmare. Not long after leaving Jehu's workshop, I wanted to give the van a full test and ambitiously decided to drive me and my fiance all the way to Santa Barbara, which is over 100 miles from LA. And this is what happened. We are heading off on our first little road trip in the, in the Wonderbug, the new and improved electric Wonderbug. Mm -hmm. We still need to come up with a name. I might rename the van, but... So I just, can we just take a second for how quiet it is? Literally silent. What the heck? And where are we going? We are going to Santa Barbara just for a quick little couple day, um, yeah, getaway. Hopefully we make it without running out of battery. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get the directions up. Yeah! I spoke to Jehu who helped me build the van and he's saying because we were driving so fast on the highway and it was up and down hills we'd definitely run the battery flat and because we don't have a fast charging station at the house I was just charging it from the 110 outlet which normally takes like 30 hours to charge from dead. So he thinks we left the house with 75% battery to start with so my calculations of getting here on a charge weren't accurate. But good news is we're only, how, how long, half a mile? 0.3 miles. 0.3 miles to the Tesla station now. So we're letting the battery just regenerate a little bit, going for a bit, and then I'm pushing, and then we're switching it back and forth. How are you feeling, Raya? I'm feeling good. Yeah. I'm just watching it, like, look, we're so close. Oh. I, th I think sometimes with new projects and inventions, you kind of have to have these experiences to be like, okay, I don't want that to happen again. So I just need to be aware now the exact voltage where my van kind of runs dead so I can 
quickly find a Tesla charging station or something. Oh. Right, let's go again. Yeah, let's do it. This is us, that's the Tesla charging station. Okay, we're moving. Ooh, this is a good one. Oh, that's heavy. That is heavy. We got it, it's all about getting a bit of momentum. Okay. 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 How are you feeling? <sighs> Exhausted. <sighs> Just been pushing it. But I think we've got a bit more juice. So, so we're, this is uphill here and then it goes down. So we're just trying to make it to the top of this hill. It's so good. <sighs> okay, break on. I think that might be the last push. Yeah. Oh. Oh, three. Are we going? More. Yeah, this is definitely downhill now. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so when that top Look, it's charging. It's going higher. Because it's regenerative. Yeah. Oh, so. Big question is, can we cross this road? It looks like there's a major road we need to cross. Okay. We don't really want to stop. Oh, we're going to have to stop. No, maybe we can keep going. We're just going straight over. Okay, go. Yes. In here, right? I don't, it says, I mean, it seems to be, yeah, yeah. like wherever this. I think in here and, and right. Oh, it's in the, it's in the hotel parking, I think. Should we check before you go in somehow? Nah. Can you see it? Uh, <gasps> that! Oh, there we are. Yeah. Okay. We found it. This isn't actually a Tesla, I bought this adapter. So this plugs in here. I can move both my chargers off of this. Oh, I'm not even asking any, anything from it, it's doing that. Okay, we've just found another charger. The van's over there, but maybe this one will work. This is all uh, learning lessons about what works and doesn't work. I thought I could just plug a Tesla charger in, but it's not. Okay, that Tesla charger didn't work. We just plugged in this one, and I think it's working. Okay, let's see. Let's test it. So these two charger port, these two chargers have just turned on, so <gasps> this indicates that it's charging full speed. Yes. And then let's look at the voltage that's coming in. Look. Oh yeah. So we've just sat here for like an hour, maybe. And it looks like we've got a lot of juice. We went from 100 volts, which is super low, to 141. But we should have enough to get to our hotel now and there's a Tesla charging station right by a hotel, so that's the plan. There was a kind guy, William, here who recognised me from YouTube and said we could stay here indefinitely. Um, <laughs> but we've got a hotel to go to, so we're going to head off. You ready to find our hotel? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> right, let's go. So during our drive to Santa Barbara and back, I'd been noticing the brakes were scraping. I know nothing about braking systems. Until the beginning of this project, I have had no prior mechanical knowledge other than the basics and being able to do oil changes and tires and stuff. But I knew there was something up with the brakes. I decided now that I've done a lot of the build of this myself, I was like, oh, I can probably change brake pads or whatever. So got back, researched which brake pads to get, and I 
change the brake pads in the front. One of the calipers was stuck, so I did all this research, managed to fix these things, and then I tried to bleed the brakes myself and did it too violently and unfortunately um, blew the, the back brake cylinders which have like a rubber seal and they push the brake shoes onto the drums in the back. So a vehicle like this, it has, oh, has two different types of brakes. The front tires are brake discs which have calipers and brake pads that push against the disc and then in the back they have brake shoes that push against drums. Anyway, so the, the front brakes are replaced. I then had to fix the back brakes because I'd blown the cylinders and then the shoes were also worn. So I replaced all that. And my friend helped me like tighten it all up, get the brakes really solid and working. Anyway, I had replaced the master cylinder. We had to take the brake booster off. And this is something we didn't know at the time. You can't run that master cylinder without that booster. Thankfully, it had been fine coming to Santa Barbara and back somehow, but when I tried to drive with all the brand new brakes on, for some reason, the brakes jammed on. And I was just driving down the road and I noticed the brakes were smoking. I noticed smoke was coming up. Someone like beeped the horn and, and like waved out the window. They're like, your back wheels are smoking. So I didn't get far before the brakes seized. And I was in the middle of the road. I was actually in the middle of Lincoln, which is like a big main road and I was trying to pull in and I'd pulled across three lanes and the brakes had completely seized. I was trying to drive and it wasn't going, so I put it in a lower gear. I think I might have even put it in first. I was panicking, there was cars coming and I put my foot down on the pedal. The motor fully revved up, full power, first gear and I heard a massive banging noise and something had broken and I was like, oh no, I was stuck. The brakes were jammed on, the motor wasn't turning anything. I mean, I was blocking traffic. I was blocking like three lanes of traffic. Everyone's freaking out. I wish I had this on video, but I, I didn't, you know, I just wasn't thinking of filming. I was just trying to resolve this issue. Anyway, five guys ended up pushing the vehicle. Literally, it was like skidding across. The wheels weren't even really turning. So we skidded across, managed to get it to the side of the road. And I was just devastated. I was like, oh man, I thought I was convinced I'd either broken the clutch or the transmission and just gone which is a mission. It would have been, after all of that work, I would have been gutted to have to like take all the motor off again and replace all that. So at that stage, my good friend Travis came and picked me up and towed me down to Long Beach to get a mechanic to look at it. Did you want, I was thinking I could stay around for a few hours and just help remove this, because I think we to see the clutch, we have to check here, um, in, in here, and then test where the, tr the transmission Oh wait, is that snapped off? That didn't snap, that didn't came off. Could that, could that be what the problem is? And this thing broke off from the, from this, from the, from the axle nap. Okay, it's on the end. Okay, that thing snapped. That's, that's not in gear, right? So yeah. This is spinning. Oh, yeah. wow, that is spinning. Oh wow, so maybe, maybe that's the only thing broken. So what they say, Louis? Okay, so. I thought it was a broken clutch or transmission, but it might just be... What is that called? What's that part that's snapped? CV axle. CV axle has snapped, which is... But it's turning when I drive, so maybe that's the only problem, hopefully. Yeah. Okay, after weeks of playing around, trying to get the brake system working properly, we're still not there. The massive problem I had the other day was it stopped working and I think the axle, this is what broke. We came down and had a look. So that's been replaced now. Um, so hopefully it will drive. Okay, let's try this out. Justin just called uh, and spotted smoke coming out the back right tire again. So uh, we've still got braking issues. Uh, which is not good. Completely lost my brakes then. Era 
terrifying. Oh my gosh. I don't know whether the brake pads are going to Oh shit, okay. a little fire extinguisher. That is terrifying. I think the... Oh man. I think the, uh, the heat just burst the tire. Have you ever even heard of that happening? Have you ever even heard of that happening? That's so nice. <laughs> this just extinguishes the flame, but it doesn't cool it down. This is just powder. So I feel like we need a... Uh, I feel like we need water to like cool, cool it down. Yeah. That is unbelievably hot. Uh, we need to wait for the wheel to cool down. Has this guy brought a hose over? Okay. It's down. It's rolling. Yeah. Yeah. You need to come around this side, it's like bubbling. We need to take this spare tire to... Uh, to get pumped up and the valve replaced. We're in a pretty bad spot too. Yeah. Yeah, this is an idea. We should probably put that warning triangle further down so people can see. Looks like. Oh. It looks like there's a tyre place literally five minutes drive. Okay, first tyre place didn't have any of these in stock, so they suggested another place. Oh, problem solving. I should probably find out if Travis is even around to tow me. said he's gonna come get me, so we, we might be good. Yeah, if you're free now, that would be a lifesaver. Sweet, all right, thanks bro. What you say? Oh, what a lifesaver. <laughs> <sighs> Crazy. Okay, I think we're good to go. So we got back from Long Beach, and uh, the mechanic had thankfully found the problem was the CB axle had snapped. He did, however, say that him and any other mechanic would not touch the brakes because I'd modified them from how they were originally with the booster. And he's like, you know, no one's gonna take on that liability. So that's something I had to figure out myself, which was a bummer because I was like, really just wanting to get it all fixed by this point. So on the way back, because the brakes weren't fixed and he wouldn't touch them, they locked up again. The brake pads actually caught fire. I lost all braking, which was terrifying. Brakes caught fire, wheel blew up. <laughs> So, got back here, the brake shoes and the cylinders are in, in the back wheels had completely disintegrated again. So I had to replace the cylinders, the brake shoes, and did some research, figured out that I had to install an older model master cylinder. That master cylinder never needed a booster and was designed to work without it. That was great. I installed that, re-bled the brakes carefully this time, installed all the new brake pads and decided to take it for another test drive. I again started having issues with the brakes. All right, we've come to save Louis because uh, his brakes gave out again. Louis, Louis, Louis. It was so hot I couldn't, it, I had to spend this long waiting to take the wheel off because it was like burning my hands. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the other wheel off and just double check 
I've, I've loosened the brake pads all the way. I don't know whether the emergency brake was jamming on or the foot pedal brake, but the literal only thing I haven't replaced is the thing I need that part for. But thanks so much for coming, guys. Yeah, of course. I got Justin to come over, bring my tools and this little adapter I need to basically, there's this thing on this van called a proportional valve and apparently when they get old, they can jam the brakes on. So I bypassed that, use this little adapter and then I had to bleed the brakes again. I don't think I've done a great job, but it's drivable. Anyway, I've been sitting out in this car park for like two hours under the van, fiddling around, getting dirty. And I think, I think I can drive. I'll keep you updated, I'll let you know how it goes, but hopefully we are nearing the end of the braking problems. I feel like it's been over a month, maybe two months of trying to get the brakes sorted. It's honestly got to that stage where I don't really want to vlog these things happening, but I feel like I'm gonna to want to look back at this time where I'm very frustrated, struggling to get things working. So yeah, the brakes seem to be doing okay not overheating but suddenly the motor just stops running and I'm just rolling and there's no acceleration so I managed to pull off thankfully rolled into the side street off the highway but I have no idea what's going on I can't I cannot figure this out massive relief guys I diagnosed the problem literally couldn't see anything wrong with the BMS or the controller and then I looked in and saw that this cable had come out of the lug that was in the top of the controller, which is super dangerous. I'm gonna try my best to get that back on temporarily and just tape it up with some electrical tape until I get back to crimp it. Good news, that cable that had come loose was the only problem, so we're driving again, everything's fine. Also, the brakes aren't jamming. I've checked a couple of times that the drums aren't heating up, which is where I noticed the smoke before, and they're not hot at all, which makes me think the brakes aren't jamming. They're still not ideal, like they're a little bit slow. Maybe there's a bit of air still in the brake lines, but um, you know, it's working. Woo, what an adventure, what a freaking adventure. And the brakes have been fine since then. They still adjust mechanical brakes at this point. And the dream scenario is I get the engine braking working. So next video, I am gonna be heading down to EV West where I went originally and bought the whole EV conversion kit. And they're gonna help me try and figure out and problem solve, why can't we get this engine braking working? Why is there still some interference between the brake transducer and the throttle, which is the original issue we had when I was working on it with Jehu. The brakes work fine for now. Long term, I'd feel way more comfortable having the extra added engine braking. That is the Palava, the absolute mission and adventure I've been on over the last few months of trying to figure out the brake system. It's been very, infuriating, very frustrating. But I just wanted to share the reality of everything that's been going on. Thanks for following along guys. I know there's a lot of new people that have been following this journey. And yeah, I appreciate all the support and encouragement and also advice because obviously I am an amateur and I haven't done everything in the best way. So I appreciate all of the comments of concern. But anyway, the story continues and I am going to be updating you guys still with this whole project until I'm really happy. I feel like it's gonna be an ongoing project with, with many iterations and tweaks and things. Something I'm very excited to announce that in the coming weeks, I'm gonna be launching a podcast from this van. I've got the camera set up here. So I'm gonna have the camera here, guests sitting here obviously, and we're gonna be driving, going on adventures and actually going and meeting people with amazing stories and seeing what they're doing, seeing the social projects. So I'm really excited to film the first one of those this week. So I'll keep you posted on when we're gonna be dropping that. It's gonna be probably the long version of that is going on the Social Good Club YouTube channel, which I'll link below. And then I'm gonna be doing shorter cut down versions on this channel of the van adventures. The next few months, there's gonna be loads of great content coming, other projects I'm doing, other big adventures, and also continuous updates on what's going on with this van. So yeah, stay tuned, subscribe, and I'll see you next week with some updates.